say hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our day. Welcome to our day. <laughs> Good boy. So, let's start that again. We're in a different location. We are in the hotel. Yeah. In Bristol, because... We are. Yeah. I was going to say the hotel, but this is going up whilst we're still here. So that's yeah. not happening. Yeah. No. Um, but we are in Bristol, as we mentioned a couple of days ago. So, <sighs> we are here now. Yes. Tonight, tomorrow night. Yeah, and then we'll be back here later in the year. But this is section two, series episode two of our LGBTQ series. And last time, we've got it wrote down, we spoke about the constant having to come out and why we hate kind of like labels, etc. So if you do want to go see that, there is a um, playlist for the LGBTQ um stuff videos that we're doing now because it is pride month yay and this one will go into there as well but you can go back to the first one but it doesn't really matter because it's not necessarily gonna have a a link it's just yeah. lgbtq yeah um and today we are going to talk about firstly the fact that for same-sex couple female so for Soph and I, as we appear, or for two men, it's for us. It's like who's the man, like who's the man in the relationship, or if it's two men, then it's who's the female in the relationship. Mm. And it's so frustrating because why does there have to be? Because there doesn't, and. And there isn't, because if you are two females in a relationship, then there is no man in that relationship. The whole, they are both female. It, it just doesn't of, even come into no, it. No, it kind of like is self-explanatory, but people just automatically assume that there should be, in a relationship, there should be one person who's more feminine and has more of a feminine role and there should be one person who has more of a masculine role yeah when <laughs> if it's like two men for example both of them can be feminine why does one have to have some masculine role and one have to have a feminine role it's like mm. if, they, if, if people wanted that then the chances are they'd probably be in a male female relationship if they wanted somebody to be that type or whatever, but it's just the case that it, we have had it brought up loads of times oh, and I'm yeah. sure many other couples have, and it's just really frustrating because it's like, there shouldn't be, shouldn't have to be this automatic assumption that there's gonna be a, a man in the relationship mm. because Yes, we sometimes one of us may dress more masculine, one of us may like sports or whatever else, but that doesn't mean that they're the man acting the man in the relationship. It's just that is what that person is interested in and that is what that person likes to wear. Yeah. Which comes on to the next one, uh -huh. which is... Um, the stigma behind clothes and we've had people say to us about the fact that we're looking more masculine because we're wearing joggers like tracksuit bottoms or whatever it is or I think in America it's called sweatpants or uh, like we're not wearing a dress or skirts or things like that yeah and I've never been like that. I was always classified as a tomboy, mm -hmm. which used to stress me out anyway because, yes, that's the term, but I was still female and it made me feel like 
people were judging me because of what I wore and yeah. were assuming my like sexual identity or whatever else just because of what I'm wearing mm. and that shouldn't be the case no and it's like with children <clears throat> why why can't a boy wear pink and a girl wear blue mm. why is it that if you have a baby that's in your pram who doesn't necessarily have hair if you dress them in blue people are automatically going to say oh he's so beautiful or he's so handsome yeah like we've had um we've seen that there are people out there who've had a baby um a baby boy and uh, no a baby girl sorry and they've dressed them in blue and not had a hair bow on them but they're wearing a blue dress and they still get called yeah a boy, a boy. and it's like why why do people automatically have to assume that the gender of somebody based and on what they're wearing that's kind of then where it starts in school then like because people have assumed that boys can't wear pink or girls can't wear blue that's when it then gets into school age kids and then that's when bullying starts yeah and even now there are kids out there even though lgbtq is so well known and like celebrated yeah. and accepted by so many com even compared to 10 years ago definitely people in schools are still getting bullied because of their sexual orientation or because of clothes that they wear mm. and so, like now obviously the rainbow flag if somebody's wearing rainbow people are automatically assuming then that they are part of the community when actually they may just be an ally and support it or they just may like rainbows yeah and it shouldn't be the case that just because of something that you wear it then dictates who you are within the community and can affect your schooling mm -hmm. and affect what friends you have and it's just I mean, it's it's the it's 2022 and these sort of things are so trivial for school aged kids and yet yeah so many people are still having to go through the whole bullying i think what somebody on here mentioned that they gave their daughter a bag and it was a beautiful bag but her daughter couldn't take it to school because she would then get called stuff. Mm. And it's like, it, it's a bag. Yeah. Like, why are people bullying somebody because of a colour of a bag? Yeah, and it is really bad because that kind of thing affects children. I mean, it affects adults too, but it affects children of school mm. age, definitely. I know that when I was in school, I was always conscious of everything yeah and i was bullied a lot you were bullied a lot mm. and um it completely throws out the whole actually being there to learn situation because for me i was always so anxious mm. because of the bullying because of people assuming and everything i had and to have eyes in the back of my head as well as my like looking for my education because i never knew when the next physical attack or verbal attack was going to happen mm. and i wasn't even out then but no i was obviously more i was dressing more boyish as it's they, they said back then or even now and i would still get called names and even when i was in college i was in a relationship with someone but i wasn't out and i would get bullied still in college and it's like we're a like 17 18 19 or older and still getting like called names or attacked verbally or physically because of something we wear maybe related to lgbtq plus and it's it's just really wrong it's like even now i know there's a few influencers out there um i can't say that i can't remember how you say the name so I'll put it in here. Oh, yeah, I don't know how you say that. Um, and their second child has 
come out as transgender mm -hmm. and they were doing videos on TikTok. It started during the pandemic when they were at home and they were homeschooling. And their little boy then was starting to identify more female and was wanting to wear his sister's clothes. And then it was probably about two, three months ago, if, mm. if that. Yeah. He then came out and said, I want to have she, they pronouns. And then she decided she wanted to change her name. And even now they're saying that it's forced on her mm. and she, like she shouldn't be wearing dresses and she's going to hate the parents for having dressed her in dresses and girls clothes and taking pictures and videos and put it all over the internet because they're going to regret it and hate their parents when they're older when actually like it shouldn't matter it's she's a dress so, yeah definitely but she's so much happier 100 percent wearing what she feels comfortable with and yeah. identifying wearing hair extensions she, whilst yeah. her hair is growing out exactly. and exactly you can see the difference. Definitely. And yet, <clears throat> before she had come out, and she was wearing more dresses for these TikTok videos, the amount of shit that they would get as a family mm. was just completely uncalled for. Yeah. Like, and e even if it turns out later in, in life that she no longer identifies as a girl, why does that automatically mean that she was she's gonna hate her family and mm. whatever because there's pictures or there's videos? Yeah. And I remember reading one comment on there that a mum turned and said that she's got a little boy <laughs> <clears throat> and she makes sure that when she does like monthly photos or whatever she has girl outfits and she dresses him as a girl and takes pictures of him in these girly outfits because she doesn't know when he's an adult if he's going to identify as something else and a lot of people that are transgender or if they do identify differently as an adult they have then nothing of their childhood yeah. that resembles them and i just thought that was a really good idea it because it helps idea them with their future and it, yeah and it's a really forward thinking mm. thing and not assuming again that just because you have a child who is born male or that they're female, gonna remain they're gonna stay that for the rest of their life exactly and that it's like not just assuming but given the impression that it's expected mm. of them yeah which shouldn't be the case yeah and then the next bit that we're going to discuss which is kind of going to start now and we're going to then bring it into the next video is for many couples the second you move on to that ne next stage of having got married is People start asking it. They, they, this isn't just like LGBTQ. It's also for like the straight couples like and whatever. People, yeah. people start saying, "Oh, when are you gonna have a child?" Mm -hmm. And I know that for straight couples there is infertility, and it can, it's not as easy as what it's made out in schools to get pregnant and have a child. But for the LGBTQ plus community to constantly have that in our faces of when you're gonna have a child. Mm -hmm when you're gonna give us a grandchild or when you're gonna give us a niece or a nephew or just whatever it's it is really difficult because unless you're married you can't to have your partner's name so if, if so if I wasn't married and I was to have a child Soph wouldn't be allowed on the birth certificate unless we had the baby for a fertility clinic. You can only go to a fertility clinic if you're of a healthy weight. You can't even be overweight, let alone obese. So you'd be thrown out if you're, if you're overweight. You can't be on certain medications and it costs a fortune. 
and Even also if you go through the nhs yeah and you can't just go to the nhs straight away because you have to have been seen to get the six free cycles on the nhs you have to have tried for a certain amount of times in the community to have a child mm. and then that it it's difficult because there are sperm donors sperm donors in the uk that you don't have to go for a clinic for, for but in certain areas they are very sparse like for cornwall there is a handful and <sighs> yeah most of them either they're not reliable yeah they either aren't reliable or they already have a couple or a person that they're donating to yeah and they obviously don't want to be donating to a certain amount of people at a time or just literally willy-nilly like jump jumping right, from one apology, person yeah. jumping from one like couple to a next mm. and it does decrease the quality of the sperm mm. so it is then difficult to have it constantly thrown in your face about trying to conceive and for some couples like us i mean we've been trying now for i can't remember now eight nine years and it is hard yeah. and it is a just a really tough subject which is where we're going to go into more detail about next time yeah but so even that, like i say to Soph quite a lot like this is where i wish that maybe i wasn't gay yeah because maybe i'd be in a relationship with a man and it would have that yeah there would be regular sperm and you can try more than one time a month or one time every three or four months or when the donor can meet up with you next. So yeah, it's, yeah. it is really difficult, but yeah. And it's, it's also another reason why um, being gay or any part of LGBTQ whatever isn't a choice. Yeah. because it's hard <laughs> it is really hard so like you get judged for what it is you wear or there's always obstacles isn't there that it's never easy to just be you mm. in the clothes you want to wear and be a parent and it's not what we will talk about it more next time but adoption isn't just an option mm, yeah and so many people say to us like to gay couples or whatever why don't you just adopt mm. why is it that because we are gay and it's hard to get sperm or eggs whichever way it is that you should be have to adopt like why like straight couples don't have that said to them like instead of having their own children. So why is it that people within the LGBTQ community constantly have that thrown at us? Yeah. It's... And as you said, it's not that easy to adopt. No. So we will go into that more next time. Um, but yeah. Yeah, it's just, we want to be us in the clothes we wear, with no stigma. Mm -hmm to be able to have children and allow them to wear whatever clothes they want to wear yeah. and to not get comments and stares like as we're going down the street and it's just awkward and children should be able to be children and wear what they want and not get bullied because mm. there is a huge rise in LGBTQ plus youth and it's not as well recognised and we should be supporting this next generation of people within our community and raising awareness to those who aren't in the community and show them that it's not a disease to be part of our community mm -hmm. and just because a male person wants to wear a dress it doesn't make them disgusting and we're just like normal people and you can be friends with us and yeah. you can support us in our journey on this short time on earth mm. so and 
just one last snippet just because for example somebody who you assume to be a man um is wearing what is stereotypically women's clothes if they are going into the female toilets for example just because somebody looks a certain way doesn't mean mm. that you can judge them for that because that person more than likely is actually a transgender woman mm. and going to the toilet can be a huge thing yeah and that might be the first time that they've had the courage to go into the toilets that they identify with mm. and that should be celebrated yeah it's not like they're going to go into the toilets and flash everybody that's there. The chances are they'll probably go into a cubicle like everybody else, do their business and then just go out. Yeah. And yeah, we should be celebrating these little milestones mm -hmm. and supporting everybody for anything yeah, really. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's kind of our next segment of this series. Yep. The next one we'll probably do when we get home. I reckon so. We're not here for long. Yeah. Um, no. Yes? No. Which is the right word to say after that? No, we're not. Right. Yes, you're correct. What she said. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's been a long day. <laughs> no, I can uh... Oh, skills. We brought them with us, especially for this video. <laughs> So, yeah. <laughs> it was like, hard getting them up there, wasn't it? It was. So thanks for coming on this journey with us. And see us for the in the next couple of days for our normal vlogs. But see us in a couple of days for our next LGBTQ Plus series. Hi everyone. <laughs> Where's mine? Oh, hi. <laughs> you might have to come over a bit. Okay. We're not putting flags down now. No pressure. No pressure. <clears throat> I like loops of flickering. Oh, that's fun. If I'm really red, it's because it's really hot in here. Just letting you know. Take the next one on. Anyone in it? So these are the cut out some noise yeah. if we don't yeah boom so we are in a different location what are we trying to do i don't know um <laughs> what? <Go>. <laughs> <laughs> we just had an indian And I've just spotted some coconut from Bashari bread yeah. in the bed. You've got coconut, you've got Indian on the bed. Where? On these white sheets. Well, that's not my fault. I, uh. It was so nice that I was really sad that I couldn't eat it all, and then I carried on eating and I ate too much. I gave up at about, in, after, after about. 20 minutes yeah i was full but anyway i think it's because we had dinner mm, we don't normally eat no, dinner we don't. that's true yeah. that's not gonna work oh you need to finger it 